Okay guys, um, I haven't heard a peep from any of you, so I'm going to assume you're good with what I gave you the last time. I hope that you are. If not, please let me know. You have my phone number. Text me. I'll be more than happy to do something. Um, you're not bothering me if you have questions. <clears throat> Um, and even if you're mad at me because I'm not there, which I have no control of, of, unfortunately, I will still be more than happy to help you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about probability distribution functions, and we're going to talk about the discrete random variables because they go with binomial and Poisson distributions, and then of course I'll talk about the um, uh, cumulative function and uh, that is going to go well with the normal distribution, cumulative frequency uh, distributions and normals. So I'm going to kind of do it separate to get it down to your throat. Binomial and Poisson are really, really easy um, stuff to learn. So I know you didn't have Poisson in AP Stat, but it's pretty similar to binomial actually. So it'll be, you'll be, you'll be good. Okay, so a probability distribution function is called a PDF or PMF, same thing, okay, probability mass function. There's no difference in between them, but you might see those letters, so that's what they mean. And what you need to know is that a probability distribution just lists all of the events that can occur and the probabilities of each of those events or the probabilities associated with those events. The properties are is that the function the probability has to be between 0 and 1 and the sum um, of um, those values has to equal to 1. So the probabilities must add up to equal to 1. Okay, And recall that you know random variables are determined by chance um, and so that's why they're random. But anyway, this function is going to be defined as the probability as x is equal to x. So this equal sign is really important here x is equal to x and this is a big x so like a big giant capital x and this is the variable x or um, so where x is 0 1 2 whatever it happens to be okay so this is the probability that this random variable big x here takes on a certain x value so you're going to see it written a lot like this okay so a simple example is you toss a coin just one time okay and maybe you know you want x to be the number of tails that comes up so your sample space is you know you're going to toss the coin you're either going to get a head or a tail and so if i make a little table here what i know is that i could get zero tails which means i get a head right and the probability that that random variable x which is the number of tails is zero is a half also i could land on a tail and so the probability that x equals the tail is also equal to a half. Notice that our probabilities add up to 100%, which means that all the possibilities are accounted for. So the probability distribution displays, so this is my display, the probabilities associated with all of the possible outcomes, which in this case are just 0 and 1. Okay. Suppose we toss two coins simultaneously and we want to let the random variable, so again this is this big X, okay, um, be the number of heads when you toss those two coins. Well the sample space is, you know, we can, both coins could land on heads or head, tail, tail, head, tail, tail. Okay, so there's four possibilities. So out of those four possibilities, what are the possible outcomes for this random variable? Well, X can be zero. I could get zero heads. Remember, this is what I'm defining here. Um, I could get one head, which would be one of those two cases, or I could get um, I could get both heads. So if I get zero heads, I'm getting tail tail. Um, if I get one head, I've got one of those situations. And if I get um, both heads, then it's H H situation. So the possibilities that this random variable can take on is zero heads, one head, or two heads define the probability distribution. Well, that means just write the associated probabilities for each outcome. So the probability when the random variable takes on the value of zero, meaning no heads, is a fourth. The probability that the random variable takes on, you know, at least one head is two fourths. And the probability that x takes on or, um, or x is equal to both heads is one fourth. 
Okay, and again, if you add those up, you should get 100%. That's pretty simple stuff. Here's another one. A discrete random variable has a probability distribution given by the function f of y is equal to ky squared, where y is 0 through 4. Okay, Find the value of k and draw the bar chart to represent this function f. Well, we know that the properties are is that the sum of the probabilities has to equal 1. So that's the only way to find k. So I'm just setting up this summation from 0 to 4 because that's the value of y. And it's ky squared. So k times, you know, when y is 0 squared plus k times y is 1 squared, k times y is 2 squared, yada, yada, yada. And I know that that has to equal to 1. And because that's so, I can add up all these like terms, set it equal to 1, and find a k value of 1 over 30. Well, what are the probabilities associated with this? That's going to help me make my bar chart because the heights of the bar chart are equal to the probabilities. So when y is 0, then I have 1 30th times 0, which is 0. So the height at 0 is going to be 0. At 1, I have k times 1 squared, which is 1 30th. So there's the height of my bar, 1 30th. At 2, I know I'm going to have another bar with k times 2 squared, or 4 30ths, and so that's the height of my graph, and so forth. Again, if I add up all of these probabilities, I get 100%, so I know I've accounted for everything, and there you have it. Okay, simple probability distribution for discrete random variables. Parameters. Parameters of discrete random variables are just characteristics, okay? We might want to find the mean, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, okay? So let's go over a couple of things here. The mean is just the expected value. It's denoted as E of X, okay? And that's just the average value. So it's just, you know, the value of X times the probability that X takes on that value. Okay, so it's x times its respective probability. The variance, or sigma squared, is e of x squared minus quantity e of x squared, or e of x squared minus e of x quantity squared. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Okay, so this is just the deviation from the mean squared. So x minus the mean times the probability that the random variable takes on a particular value. And then variance is always the square root, I'm uh, oh, sorry, standard deviation is always the square root of variance. So if we take the square root of sigma squared, we get a sigma, and it's the variance. The mode, the mode is just the maximum probability that you can find. So in that last example, the mode here would be, you know, 4 because it takes on a maximum value. This function takes on a maximum value when x is equal to 4. So that's one little example. Um, so it's just the maximum. All right. If there's no max, there's no more mode. And if there's more than one max, then we call that multimodal, which you really don't have to deal with too much, but just wanted to get that in there. OK, so <clears throat> here's a little example. Let x be the random variable such that the number shown when a dice is rolled. So it's a, um, x is the number shown when a dice is rolled. So I roll a die and there are six possibilities that come up, could come up. One through six, right? Could take on that value. A one could turn up, a six could turn up, whatever. Find the mean variance standard deviation of x. So the probability that x takes on any one of those specific values is one sixth. That's easy. The expected value is just, remember, um, I'm going to go back to this over here. It's just x times its probability. So that's x times 1 6. The probability is equally distributed. So it's x times 1 6 or x over 6. So that gives me 7 halves or 3.5. Okay, and I showed a little bit. You know, I didn't do the whole thing. But anyway, pretty easy to figure out. Okay, if we want to find, let's move this a little bit. If we want to find, um, e of x squared, well, all I'm doing here is taking this little formula and I'm squaring the x. So it's the same exact formula, but I square the value of x. So 1 squared is 1 times 1 6, 2 squared is 2 6, 3 squared is 9 6, and so forth to get 91 6. So if I need to find the variance, that's simple. 
it's 91 6 my e of x squared minus e this whole thing squared e of x squared which would be 7 half squared I, I like to do fractions so anyway if I take 91 6 minus 49 fourths I get 35 12 okay so that's this thing right here and if I'm asked to find the standard deviation all I need to do is take the square root of this to get 1.71 and you're going to do a few problems um, today or tomorrow on that okay so that brings us to the binomial distribution okay uh, it's also called the Bernoulli or Bernoulli trials same thing Bernoulli experiment and there are properties so there are there are characteristics that have to be met criterion in order for you to be able to use a binomial distribution number one you have to have n identical trials it's finite you're not going to flip a coin infinitely so the trials are going to be identical <clears throat> no deviation from that the trial is going to be independent and consistent okay so you flip the coin you flip it the same exact way the same exact coin yada 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 each trial has two possible outcomes, a success or a failure. So there's only two possible outcomes, and the outcomes are mutually exclusive. What does that mean? The probability of success is constant for each trial, and the probability of failure, well, that's just 1 minus p. We call the probability of success p, and the probability of failure q. Okay. So the formula looks like this. The probability that x is equal to r is equal to n choose r, p to the r, or q to the n minus r, where r takes on some finite number of values. Okay. This big x, this random variable x, is going to be the number of successful outcomes in n trials. That's how we think of it, and we denote the binomial like this. X follows a binomial distribution with parameters n and p where n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success. A lot of times you're going to be asked to find the expected value. That's just n times p. Super duper easy. The vari um, variance of x, which is sigma squared, that's just n p q. It's the number of trials times the probability of success times the probability of failure, or you can write it like this. It's all in your formula book. The standard deviation, well, whatever you come out for variance, you're just going to take the square root, and that's going to give you your standard deviation. And you should know that the mean, which is equal to mu, is equal to the expected value. And again, that's just x times the probability, the sum of the product of uh, the values of x times the respective probabilities. So let's look at an example. This is a real simple example. An apple is picked from a large number of apples in a container. The probability that the apple is bad is 0 0.05. A sample of 15 apples is selected at random. A. Find the expected value of bad apples. Well, if x is the random variable that equals the number of bad apples, then I know I have a binomial distribution number of trials is 15 and the probability of success which is a bad apple is 0 0.05 so the expected value is just n times p so multiply them and get 0 0.75 to find the variance that's just number of trials times probability times failure uh, probability of success times probability of failure so that's 15 times 0 0.05 times 0 0.95 or 0 0.7125 and then if I want to find uh, the standard deviation, I just take the square root of variance and get 0.844. Here's another one. In a recent survey, 85% of U.S. households have a high-speed internet. A sample of 18 households is taken. What is the probability that exactly 15 will have high-speed internet? First of all, you need to ask yourself, am I dealing with a binomial? Well, you are, but does this fit all the criteria? Well, I know that the experiment, which is the survey, is repeated a fixed number of times. Okay, it, it, The same survey is given out to every household, so it's the same. The trials are independent, so if one household has internet, it has no effect on whether the next household survey has internet. The home either has it or it doesn't, so success or failure. Okay, and we know the probability of success is constant, it's 85%, um, and so yes, it's a binomial. So we can say 
that this random variable is uh, follows a binomial distribution with 18 trials and a probability of success of 85.85. And I wrote that out here. You know, x is the number of successes, it's 15, n is the number of trials, that's 18. The probability of success is 0.85. And this is the formula you would use if you had to do it by hand. Okay, and I did that but you're going to get to use your calculator for all of this stuff so I'm going to show you how to use the calculator too so this is 18 choose 15 times probability of success to the 15th times probability of failure cubed right to the 18 minus 15 and don't forget that this represents a number this is 18 factorial divided by 15 factorial times 3 factorial and so if you work that out in your you know by hand or using your calculator to compute that those numbers here you get this and so the probability that 15 will have high speed internet is about 0.239. So in other words, there's a 2.4% chance that 15 of the 18 households will have high speed internet. Now the calculator makes it nice and easy because if you want to use your calculator, it's, you're always going to use binomial PDF, always. Well, for now, anyway, binomial PDF. And the parameters here that you have to enter into the calculator are the number of trials, probability of success, and x. So in this case, our x was 15. So you press second vars. So let me do that. All right, so let me bring my calculator. You press second vars. And if you arrow up, you go to binomial PDF and press enter. Number of trials is 18. The probability of success is 15, and the x value I'm looking for is 15. I'll just hit enter a couple of times, and you get 0.241. Um, and so, as you can see, they're a little bit off, but there was actually, uh, you know, if you round this, you get 2.4. Um, so, anyway, you ex essentially get the same exact um, answer. So the answer choices would be designed so that way they would, you know, if you rounded, they come out the same. Okay, I'm going to do Poisson in, an, in the next video. Okay, so keep an eye out for that.